Okay, is that working? Yep. Right, okay, so good to see lots of you back, which is good. We had a bit of a quiet time last week. Um, and so, so that's good. So we've got Ian starting today, and Pauline's back, who came along the session before we had a break. Um, uh, and it sounds like there might be one or two other new um, students interested in starting, which would be great. Um, this, it's, it's got a little bit up and down this class. Um, one or two people, like Kevin's having a break, John has hurt his arm for a bit, so he's going to be out for a little while. Um, I've had, it's, it, last week we were very, very quiet, and we were two students away for a bit, and I know they will be coming back. But what, what's happened is the afternoon group has got really, really busy. So there's a bit of a mismatch. So I, I might see if anybody wants to come to the morning group, but I doubt they would. But it just means that if I, I've probably got to manage a little bit. If anybody's sort of staying on to the afternoon session, I'm, I've probably got to just manage that a little bit. Which is mm-hmm. I want to say you've got the stage to put on. Well, <laughs> not really. <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> So yeah, just to say that. What, what I'm thinking though, is if they, on, on the classes that have got a bit bigger, what, what I have been doing, rather than making other sessions, I've been just carrying over the sessions. So when I've had over 15, so this has really been my lead class for a long time. Basically the lead class, I, I have, I have, I've had a waiting list for a while. I've not been really taking many students for a long time. Um, because it's been usually 17 students, 16 students each session. The same with the Tuesday class, Tuesday afternoon class, there's been over 15 pretty much every week. So if people have missed, I'll just carry it over. So basically what I need to keep myself sustained is a core of about 50, average 15. And then I'm really am quite happy to carry sessions over. Um, if what happens with the afternoon class is it, it becomes even more, I might just try and make keep the average of the two classes. We'll see we, because I can't necessarily <laughs> include everybody to, to come over each time. Can you still make one up if you miss one? Yeah, you can, can do, do it. But or, or what I'll do is I'll just carry that session over. So <laughs> say, say you've played four weeks, you miss a week, it'll be one week off the next month. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I, I can't necessarily carry it over if I'm really busy, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm really full. Just, you know, I think we basically can manage 22 people here, <laughs> so if there's like 20 already, there's only two spare room. Really. That's basically what I'm saying. But one way or the other, it works in the end. And actually, if we can get the, you know, if there are one or two new students for this class, that's all to the good, because that would just make it more flexible. But, yeah. but just to mention that. Um, and it's really, you know, ideally that, because sometimes I've found that, you know, we're really this thing of charging um, for the whole month at a time, you know, I started after COVID because uh, I, I basically closed half the work, half the classes I run, and that was the only way I could kind of sustain myself. But as they got healthier, you know, I've been able to be a bit more flexible, really. And I may even start another class in May, in which case it's even more, you know, I've got a bit more money coming and I don't have to worry so much, yeah. sort of thing. So that's just to sort of kind of focus on Okay, so this month's project is working um, from your old photographs, your own project, or your own projects, really. That, that's, I thought I'd just kind of leave it a little bit more open to you. But the old photo, I thought was a really nice idea. I think that was someone, I don't know if it was Mel or Chris suggested that. Mel or Chris, somebody suggested it. We, we had a suggestion, I thought that was quite nice. Um, and I like the idea of working black and white, particularly like it's September, and it almost feels like a new term or a new year. And often we get new students starting. Sometimes it's nice to recap the basics. So I thought it would be quite nice to just work in, for me, to just demonstrate in black and white for a while. If you want to use colour, that's no problem whatsoever. But I'm going to keep my demos as tonal demos. So last week I did a a charcoal demo. And I actually worked on landscape, which was that the start of it. I can quite finish it. We've got another tree here. and um, I thought this week, I'll, a lot, quite a few people working on portraits, so I thought I'd just go over the portrait stages, how I would go about drawing a portrait. Which many of you will have seen me do this multiple times over the last 10 or 15 years, but, and then for other people, this will be quite new. Okay, so the way I tend to draw, and this is Ivan's photo, which is the image. 
Um, the way I tend to go about drawing portraits, first of all, I just want to get some sort of structure going. So I'm interested in thinking like, well, the, the whole of the head is. I probably want to draw a head somewhere there. Yeah, so I'm just kind of working out roughly shapes on the, on the paper. So that's right, you know, that will give me enough room. Um, I then am going to be looking for whereabouts is her eye level. So it probably helps to actually just, you know, maybe it's like a pencil over the lines, and then you can actually see a line and it's going that direction. Um, now, your eye level is more or less halfway down from the top of the skull to the chin. You're looking about halfway down. And with my pencil, I can, I can just, you know, measure that. So perhaps go from the tear duct to the chin, and then if I did that, actually, yeah, the, probably the top of the skull's there, and then her hair is over the top. So I'm thinking probably about there, by level, that would be the pencil room. Um, and then the other thing I'm looking for is almost like a line of symmetry, like an imaginary line of symmetry going through the middle of the feature. So this will just help me to structure it. And again, I can do the same sort of thing. So if I think about maybe this little bit, this little, um, V-shape in the lips there, that's nice. And then somewhere just maybe in the middle of the where the, the middle of the nose there, before it starts to just out. So again, if I, if I put my pencil there, I'm seeing something like that. Yeah. So again, that's at a bit of an angle, and that's a bit of an angle. And if I'm doing that, I can see that there's a lot more of this side of the face, than just a little bit of this side of the face. <coughs> So that line would need to be about there. Yeah. So it's a little bit of structure that I can then work out from. So it's a bit like you know, you're building a house, you put foundations in, or you just lay out the lines of where you want to work. Um, so that should be a good spot to start. Once I'm there, I can then start drawing in features. So I like to start with eyelid on this side. So the, the top of the eye view looks a little bit like that. It's that kind of shape. It's kind of coming up, up a little bit across, maybe up like that, bit, and then down. So that's the sort of shape I'm doing there. Um, I then look at the pupil in the eye of this, which the top of the, so the, if that's the, the pupil in the eye of this, um, the top of the pupil is slightly kind of eclipsed by the eyelid. So I can see roundness here, but not here. It's quite flattened on there. So I'm just drawing that at the bottom, and then and I'm looking at how much space there is for the white of the eye, how much space there is for the white of the eye on the other side. So I'm seeing something a little bit like that, maybe a little bit of tone. With with the charcoal, I've got these paper blenders that are quite nice. They're just, uh, just just sort of softening areas out. Blending areas here. I'm just going a little bit darker for the pupil. That feels a little bit like that. Um, there's quite a bit of shadow in the side of the on the side of the, the eyebrow there. A little bit of shadow under here. Charcoal's very all or nothing. So I'm kind of making it it's quite dark and then I've probably just got to just soften that out, lift that out a little bit. And then her eyebrow is, again, it's coming up here. The highest point is just around here. Like that. So that's, and then actually the bottom eyelid, I could have got that in a little bit earlier, but you see a tiny bit there. And then there's actually highlight there. So I think that's enough to, but there's a little bit of shadow there. And then it's actually, Light catching that some of the deeper. So that, that's how I can um, work in the this way. I think got quite a lot of light across the bridge of the nose. That wants to go to about there, so I'll just try and lift that out a little bit. I can get a rubber and 
lighten that a little bit. Or I can do it that later. Um, and then we've got more shadow. So I'm looking at how much shadow just on the side of the nose, just here. Yeah. And then how much space until I get to the um, basically you're looking for the other eyelid. So I've got my line here and I'm thinking this starts about here. Just a bit of thick bit of charcoal. So it goes up and comes across. Now because I'm seeing more of this side of the face, this eye might appear a bit narrower because part of it's disappearing around the corner. Whereas this one might appear a little bit wider because yeah. this is a bit squarer onto me. The other thing is to check the distance between here. I, I might have made that eye, well, I have made that eye a bit too big to be honest, but I won't, won't bother altering it too much now. But I think I made a few from the iris, Julie. Um, if you look at the distance between the eyes, <laughs> you're looking at probably about an eye width. Um, somewhere I've got to divide it. So these are fine. But if you're looking from photos, these are quite useful bits of kit. These are actually kept at my granddad's shed, so I don't know where to find them. <laughs> um, but I could measure that eye, or it wouldn't matter which eye. I want to do it straight in the photo because I don't want to damage the photo. And then compare it with the distance between the eyes. And it comes out just a little bit over. So I think I'm actually going to move that over a tiny bit more. Started there. It's just over a nice width. Yeah. It will vary from person to person. Some people's eyes are a lot closer in, some a lot wider. You can do that with your pencil, just make sure your pencil, but sometimes it just helps sometimes to have something a little bit pointy. So, again, just a few from the iris. So, basically, the same as what I've done already, showing the few from the iris, a little bit of shadow here, kind of a bit of shadow here. Uh, just quickly soften that out a little bit. And there's a little bit of shadow in the tear duct there too. And then this is all in shadow. Yeah, so perhaps a bit more charcoal there. You can blend with your fingers, or if you want to use charcoal, you use these paper blenders. This shadow on the side of the nose actually comes up to the eyebrow here. And it's really looking at shapes, looking at the shapes of the shadow. So if you can almost like draw a line of the shadow first, mm -hmm. that might help. I think I've gone a bit, again, I've gone a bit out here somewhere. That's the eyebrow shadow that comes across here and just starts to just curl around there. Um, then from there I want to try and find out what the tip of the nose is. So one way of looking is to have a look at the angle between the corner of the eye and the tip of the nose. So I think it's going to come out somewhere. Sometimes I find it helps to just draw a little circle where you think where you think the tip of the nose is. The thing with nose is, is you know, it's just skin the same colour as the rest of our skin. Because it juts out, the light catches highlights and then casts shadows. So, in some ways, they're actually hard to sort of define, really. But I'm thinking, I think the tip of the nose is about there, and that's almost like a little guideline. So, there's then a very, very slight shadow. I could draw a line, but I actually just need to blend that in and just have that slightly lighter here and slightly shadowy. On that side. Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to steer there. And then on this side, a um, little bit of shadow under the nose. There's a bit of shadow under, well, basically, this side of the nose is all in shadow. Got some shadow in there. Went down the fingers. Um, and then I can't really see too much on the nostrils, but Thing, because they're in the shadow, it's about there, and you usually find that there's like a slightly stronger, and that can all go a little bit dark under there, slightly stronger, and shadow just around the side of the nostrils. 
So again, a little bit darker and just soften the edges of that out. That's more or less where the nose would be. Much in shadow there. Um, and then work your way down through the features. There's a little bit cast shadow here. So a nose is just casting a little bit of shadow there. It's a nicely lit photograph, this. It's not, you know, it's not very stark lighting, is it? It's not a soft. Um, you've got this little shape under your lips, which one's disappeared under a <laughs> You find that there's like, almost like a little oval shape in there. I can just about see that there. So that would be about there. Might, maybe you might draw it in and take it out if it's not that prominent. But then from there, I can get that little V shape of the lips. There. And then, so that would be the top lip. Where her lips meet would be. Sharp a bit, sharp about there, and the bottom lip about there, Something like that. We're seeing a lot more of this side of the lips than that side. You could see where the corner of the lips line up. We're actually just dropping vertical lines down. Sometimes. But I would say the tip of the nose is about there. The lips come out just slightly beyond that, perhaps about there on that side. And then I can draw that line well, but then that is actually a little bit of an angle. Her eyes are at an angle, so her lips will be at an angle. So we need to just keep those. So again, if it helps, you know, just pop a guideline there as well. And lips kind of come across here. And again, this side, let me just see where they line up. Maybe with the that's roughly lining up with a pupil, slice that up a bit, which is about here. So again, don't, don't be afraid to put a few guidelines in. Quite often you find that they will roughly line up with pupils. You can want to, it's not doing there, but that's fantastic. So again, I can bring this line out, and then she looks like she's smiling, the corner of her mouth just comes up a little bit. So that's why I like to draw that line, and then get the lips to kind of work down and just come up to meet that. It's perhaps a little bit full at the bottom. Just, uh, just try and find the shapes. It's too much. Sort of in here. All good so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then from that, so you've basically got the main features in. A little shadow there. We can do all the softening and things like that. Blending. Um, the shadow over here. Work that in, or you can do all that after if you want. I think with charcoal, I'm actually quite like to do it as a go because, um, you know, just keeping those sort of tonal shapes. So, under, under her lip, there'll be a little bit of shadow there, so that can just be there, and then that soften that out a little bit. With actually, with charcoal, it actually helps to work a fair size. If I was working, trying to do this like you know, this size, that'd be impossible unless you've got a Pointy charcoal, so I do think going a little bit bigger helps. Then we just need to work out where's the chin. So I'm thinking there, but again, we could measure it. We could sort of measure something like off the photo. That, that's the chin, and then compare that to maybe her eye. And it's more or less the same size as her eye. So that, that to me is coming. Maybe I'll make that touch long. Perhaps with that there it might be better. Yep. So sort of compare. In all these measurements, just compare it to something you've drawn already. I used to compare it with where I started, so this is height. Compare that there. Um, this, I'll just show you, I know this doesn't really relate to portraiture, but this is a painting I started yesterday. So this is a painting I've been commissioned to do of a house. So what I did was this chimney, I just related everything to the size of that chimney. So I compared that chimney size to that window size, the gap between there, you know, how far across, you know, look at where things line up, but basically just, you know, how many chimneys fit down to, to get here. Just make sure you get everything in proportion. So just pick something. And this I was working from life, so I was literally measuring it like this, or sort of like, you know, that'd be the chimney size, and then just sort of stepping down. But if you find something, if you're working from photo, that's easier. Just find something and just keep comparing it. 
hit them on the pin with the pair of That way, you know, you can be drawing bigger than your photograph. So, you know, just establish that, like, right, I want my eye that size, everything else is going to be multiples of that. Right, so that's that. So just get there. Then it's then, well, we can't see her here, so we haven't got to worry about it. Either. That's good. She's not showing the teeth. That's it. Easy. Just get the shape of the face now, so we can say that is almost like the narrowest point there. Then comes out a little bit around her eyebrow, down the side of her temple there. So should give us a forehead shape. Then coming out, the cheekbone comes a little bit wide. You could see where that. Where's well, the widest part in relation to? It's probably about here. Relation, and then it then starts to come in. See how much space between the, her nose and the side of her face. Maybe her nose comes. Either her nose comes out a bit further. I think that's probably it. Look at how much space between the corner of the mouth and so that's got to come quite a bit. And just. And then the chin, it starts to change direction a little bit around the chin, a little bit like that. So that gets hopefully the side of the face. Then we're coming under here, kind of, it's a little bit of shadow here that gives me a sense of where her jawline is on that side. Um, and then her neck, mostly if I carried that line on her neck, it would come out about there. I think her neck's about there. Or you could just line that up vertically with something, just to try and get that point. So a bit of shadow in here, all the shadow really. I think with charcoal sometimes it's worth putting the tone in and then you know drawing lines into it. Sometimes that can help. Um, you know, use your fingers or this little bit of leather is quite nice and just Work that smoothing the tone out that works quite well. Or the paper blender, so I'm going to just get that in. I think I can go a tiny bit darker still, just get a bit more shadow in there. Um, and then it's really just finding the, her hairline on this side. The sh again, I think that it's a very soft edge. The shadow is probably cast under her hair there. so. I think it's coming somewhere down here, and then forehead back here. I can lose all this and rub that out, and then just kind of work out the shape of her hair. This comes up quite a bit. It's got a, it's like a side parting that's more or less carry that line on it, almost lend about there in relation to her nose. So I think that'll be about there. That kind of goes upwards. There's a few bits of highlight in there. And we've got a curl around here, a, a kind of deeper curl that way. I won't go too far into it, but just get, get the basic shape. Almost like just try and get it as a shape and see where the maybe where these little highlights line up. Something a bit like that for for hair shape. Is that okay? Is that enough to get this off? Talk to you. No, no, carry on. <laughs> right, I'll switch this You've got a copy of that. Is that your picture?